Hey kiddos, welcome back. It's Mr. Hummer again. And today I want to tell you a story about an individual named Ira Remsen. Ira was one of America's first great chemists. He lived from 1846 to 1927. In fact, he founded the chemistry department at Johns Hopkins University. Um, in his journal, Ira Remsen wrote of an experience that I think excited him about science, chemistry specifically. I'd like to read that excerpt today and show you a demonstration of that excerpt. So here we go, and I quote, while reading a textbook on chemistry, I came upon a statement, nitric acid acts upon copper. I was getting tired of reading such absurd stuff and I determined to see what it meant. Copper was more or less familiar to me, for copper pennies were then in use. I had seen a bottle marked nitric acid on a table in the doctor's office, where I was then doing time. I didn't know, I did not know its peculiarities, but I was getting on and I was likely to learn. The spirit of adventure was upon me. Having nitric acid and copper, I had only to learn what the words act upon it meant. Then the statement, nitric acid acts upon copper, would be something more than just mere words. All was still in the interest of science and knowledge. I was even willing to sacrifice one of the few copper cents then in my possession. I put one of them on the table, opened the bottle marked nitric acid, poured some of the liquid on the copper, and prepared to make an observation. But what was this wonderful thing which I beheld? The scent was already changed, and it was no small change either. A greenish-blue liquid foamed and fumed over the scent and over the table. The air in the neighborhood of the performance became dark and red. A great colored cloud arose. This was disagreeable and suffocating. How should I stop this? I tried to get rid of the objectionable mess by picking it up and throwing it out the window, which I had meanwhile opened. I learned another fact. Nitric acid not only acts upon copper, but it also acts upon fingers. The pain led yet to another unpremeditated experiment. I quickly drew my fingers across my trousers, and another fact was discovered. Nitric acid also acts upon trousers. Taking everything into consideration, that was the most impressive experiment, and relatively probably the most costly experiment I have ever performed. I tell of it even now with interest. It was a revelation to me. It resulted in a desire on my part to learn more about that remarkable kind of action. Plainly, the only way to learn about it was to see its results, to experiment, and to work in the laboratory. Close quote. The reddish-orange gas that was produced is nitrogen dioxide, a very toxic gas. That's why we're using the fume hood today. Um, the bluish-green solution that's produced at the bottom of this flask is copper to nitrate. See if I can show that to you a little bit. You can see that liquid. And the penny, which you can't see right now, but I had previously done this experiment for another class and I saved the penny after I cleaned it off. It ends up looking like this. It's very shiny. In fact, if you look at it carefully, it's very sharp around the edges because the outside has been dissolved by the nitric acid. I think I know what the words act upon now mean, don't you? That's why we do demonstrations in this class. I hope they help you understand concepts and help you apply them better in your lives. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.